yeas are 216. The nays are 210. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. Well, good evening, everyone. Grant Stinshield here. I can't help but chuckle. What in the world is now former Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy doing at this moment? He never thought this day would come. But I'm here to tell the establishment this is proof you all have been put on notice. This is a day for conservatives to rejoice in. Eight Republicans made this happen. Thanks to Matt Gates, who said, you know what? Enough is enough. If you're going to make us promises and we're going to agree to hand you a speakership, well, then you better live up to those promises. Kevin McCarthy did none of those things over his, what, nine, ten months as speaker. In fact, in many respects, he turned his back on the promises. We didn't get bills right away. We didn't get single-issue spending bills right away. We got investigations that basically went nowhere. We didn't get any subpoenas that we needed. We should have been firing right out of the box with these subpoenas. So conservatives got angry. We certainly didn't get spending cuts. This latest deal to go uh, to keep us funded for the next 45 days is a joke. This was Matt Gates during the debate to get Speaker McCarthy to vacate his seat. I take no lecture on asking patriotic Americans to weigh in and contribute to this fight from those who would grovel and bend knee for the lobbyists and special interests who own our leadership, who have, oh, boo all you want, who have hollowed out this town and have borrowed against the future of our future generations. Quite frankly, it takes cojones of steel to do what Matt Gates did. He had the entire Washington elite class against him. He had many moderate Republicans against him. He certainly had rhinos, Republicans in name only against him. But you know who was with him? The heart of America. Make America great again, conservatives. Now, I didn't think this was going to make it all the way through. And I didn't really want Democrat help with this. I didn't want Democrats in our business. But I'll tell you this. I tell you, I'm right 95% of the time. 5% I get it wrong. I may have gotten it wrong on this one, but I'm rejoicing today. And if there was an outcome that I could have hoped for, this is perfect. Now, here's why I think it's perfect. Because the elites are squirming, they're struggling, they're name calling. Listen to former governor of Maryland, Larry Hogan, on with Neil Cavuto on Fox. It, it goes to show you Fox, who, who they put on right after this vote. This guy, Rhino, to say the least. Uh, Matt Gates is a disgrace that has done more to damage the Republican Party with his actions today than any Democrat ever could. Um, I think, you know, it just proves uh, that Washington is hopelessly divided and broken. Uh, and that's why people are so frustrated with, with Congress and both parties, frankly. Uh, it's proving, it's showing that we can't lead. Well, you're right, Washington is broken. But I would disagree with your very last statement. It shows you can lead. And in my opinion, Matt Gates showed leadership through all of this, even in the face of, of many people saying, hey, I'm not going to vote with you on this one. But he stuck to it. And now McCarthy's out. And now the next Republican to take the gavel has to know that he better stand true to America first principles and the ideals of limited government. It's literally a simple, simple game. So Larry Hogan is part of the establishment, the Washington elite, the Washington Post may say Republicans are in disarray now. Who are they going to choose for speaker? Oh, the impeachment inquiry is on hold. As if that has gone anywhere. We had a hearing last week. When's the next one? We've got nothing out of this Congress controlled by Speaker McCarthy. This was Gates shortly after the vote had come through that he was successful. Talking about Trump putting out a tweet that maybe we shouldn't oust McCarthy. President Trump, though, put on, he put on Truth Social that he didn't think this was a good idea. He didn't want to see Republicans fighting with other Republicans. How do you respond to the former president? Uh, I, I, would, uh, I would say that uh, my conversations with the former president leave me with great confidence that I'm doing the right thing. Well, I'm going to back 
Matt Gates up on that one. It was probably a year and a half ago. I had a conversation, me and President Trump, alone. And I told the president to his face, I don't like this McCarthy guy, Mr. President. And he giggled. President Trump did. He says, Grant, trust me. I have my reasons. I said, Mr. President, you, you know I'm with you, but I'm not going to stop attacking him. And you know what President Trump did? He just winked at me. That's it. So I back up Matt Gates that everything President Trump talks about leads me to believe Speaker McCarthy's not the right guy for a Make America Great Again, America First movement.